Let's do it. Friday morning, Joe and the pro triple grande latte from me. Uh, Drew looking handsome with those baby blue eyes. I like the way the shirt's bringing the color out. Marco, ugly as shit. How are you, boys? <laughs> oh, God. Your man crushes just bother me, uh, Prez, you know? Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? I just want to say this for the record, Marco. We are all God's creations. We are what I call God's art or Gart, if you will. And I have deep respect for Gart. I mean, God created a handsome Drew, and then he created you. What can I say? Marco, I, I was on the other end of this last time with the UFC guy. He, oh, yeah, he, but listen, Drew. Prez was loving the UFC Drew, guy. Drew, listen. And, and banging I mean, the, so. the bottom line is, with no disrespect to you, and you are a handsome cat, I mean, Kyle is all world. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <man. laughs> you got to pump the brakes on this, Prez, man. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what? If I don't enjoy doing these shows, I don't want to do them. And the worst part is I always get to see myself, and I'm freaking... Buff! Marco, (laughs) Pittsburgh Steeler jersey, big game this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ralph sent out an amazing stat on New England uh, and how they've covered 20 times in a row in this spot. Uh, Make sure to join Ralph on Twitter, at Ralph Michaels. Uh, Best information you'll ever get. Boys, this is our bowl preview show. What we're going to do is we're going to run down the bowl board. We're going to do one to two minutes on each bowl game. So super quick. Uh, and we will, leave, we, will, we will just go until the New, York, the New Year's Day bowls because we'll catch those up next Friday with both of you as well. So with all of that said, I just want to make mention that Carmine is on an 11-0 hockey run. It's very rare for us to get these 11-0 runs. Uh, Marco's been in this game for a long time. Uh, He keeps talking about this 25-0 run that nobody knows about. Um, And he's trying so hard to jinx Carm because he doesn't want his streak broken. 14 more games to break your streak. So calm down a little bit, Marco. Oh, I told Carm I'm rooting for him till he hits the 20s. Then, you know, then I got to start, you know, got to keep that streak there. Okay, but well. That was in baseball back in 2010, Prez. I know you said nobody remembers it, but uh, it was quite the run. And actually that baseball season uh, was monitored by the sports monitor. And our own Teddy Covers had an amazing baseball season that year, too. And we were going back and forth, the two of us, one, two, the entire season. So you can ask Teddy about that 2010 baseball season. Drew, what's the best streak you've ever done? Um, I, I, I think it was 7-0, and oh, um, probably. I, I, not, not, nothing really crazy. I, I, I would say the college basketball totals the last two years, Prez, is where I've kind of done, done very well, hitting 60% in those back-to-back years. But other than that, nothing, nothing like to, to, to blow smoke, you know. The best streak uh, of my life was back when I was, I think, 21. I did three girls in one night, seven and five. <laughs> oh, Perez. Now I couldn't do it, though, dude. Honestly, I couldn't. The third girl, I'd have to fake it because I'm just too old. I mean, Drew can handle three in one night. Marco could handle maybe a half. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably stuck at two. But, yeah, that was my best streak. Two of those girls were actually best friends. They spoke about it the next day, and I never spoke to them again. So it wasn't at the same time, Prez? No, but I have had, I have, I've, I've been lucky enough to have my fair share of threesomes. Uh, not in many, many years. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. This isn't about the Prez. saving his ass right there. <laughs> <laughs> This is not about the Prez's sex life, which is robust. Okay. It's very important. Yeah. Marco is like, oh, God, how do I get it? Why am I doing these shows? You're reading my mind. (laughs) Yeah. 
Guys, head over to wagertalk.com. Our promo for, we got two promos today. I'm going to give you one. Marco will give you the other. Uh, Carmine's entire hockey season and playoffs, only $2.99. That will not last. It's usually $800, $2.99 at wagertalk.com. And if you email support at wagertalk, you can get a month of his soccer for free as a bonus. Marco, give out your promo, and then let's get going. Uh, We've got an NBA game going tonight, guys. It's my insider game of the week. We've had a great start to the NBA season. We're hitting 63%. The play tonight normally sells for $25. Last week's insider game of the week was Miami plus nine. They won outright by 23 You can get it. Use coupon code MD10, and you're going to get that play tonight for just $10 at Wager Talk. Drew, feel free anytime you come on to create your own coupon code as you do because you run customer service at sportsmemo.com. Otherwise, guys, let's get into the bowl games. Let's start with the automation. What the hell, man? Who comes up with this shit? (laughs) Autonate, autonation. What the hell is autonate? Is that even a word? <laughs> Did this bowl exist last year? The autonation cure bowl. It's the yeah, worst it's, name ever. It's anyway. new about three years ago. Okay, like well, cancer, I, that's how much I pay attention to the names of these things. Tulane minus three and a half. The over and under is sixty-one. Uh, we'll start with you, Carm. What are your thoughts on this game? Carm, is he on the show? I just love <laughs> Carm. <laughs> I, I'm all carmed right now. I'm carmed. Marco, uh, Tulane minus three and a half, uh, over and under 61. Let's go. All right, I'm going to look to the uh, Tulane side here, Prez. The angle look at in the bowls. You got a 6-6 six and six team that won their last game to get to the bowl. So you know that they are pumped up and happy to be here. This is a team that won four of their last five down the stretch. I'm going to go ahead and take the momentum play with Tulane. Uh, We got the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Now, I do know of Gildan. It might be a different Gildan, but I think they're a shirt and hoodie company. Uh, Another utterly ridiculous name. I've heard of New Mexico. Um... (laughs) Utah State versus North Texas. North Texas, a big dog, plus seven and a hook. The over and under has moved from 64 and a half to 68. Uh, Drew, where are you going with this game? Uh, so the, the, the North Texas-Utah State game, I would um, – w- w- one thing about the, the Tulane game, Tulane has a new OC. I like that as well, Marco, so I like your, your Tulane play. But North Texas-Utah State – Utah State, um, they're, they're pretty much their whole coaching regime is going to Texas Tech, losing their defensive coordinator. The OC is going to kind of play both duties. It's not a really a profile I look to bet on in college football bowl games. Um, both teams have a really good quarterbacks. Um, I, I kind of agree with the push here from 10 to 7.5, the money coming in on North Texas. I like North Texas here, Prez. And also I, I, I look to bet Conference USA teams. They've had a lot of success the last five years in bowl season. Whereas opposed to that, the Mountain West, I think, had a really down year. Less talented teams as compared to the past, so I'm looking to fade the Mountain West. I like uh, North Texas here, Prez. Speaking of looking, you kind of look a little like Jesse on Breaking Bad. What do you think, Marco? Yeah, no? Yeah, I can see that one. I'll give you that one. Yeah, you look a little bit like Homer on uh, The Simpsons. (laughs) Thanks, Prez. (laughs) Mitsubishi Motors, Las Vegas, Bull, Fresno, uh, 11 and two on the season, minus six against Arizona State. Jesus Christ, this was a line move from hell. Fresno came out at plus three. It's a nine point line move. Maybe you can explain that and the over and under is 54. Uh, I had Fresno opening at three and a half. I didn't have it the other way. So it's only a three, it's only a two and a half point move. Well, it uh, actually opened at plus three for a few minutes. Okay, well, they, that was posted wrong because uh, they never they never were going to be a dog in this one. Fresno State, they've got one of the best defenses in the country, uh, Prez. And normally in this Las Vegas Bowl, these early ones, you want have a tendency to want to look to the dogs because a lot of times the teams that are favored here in, in this particular bowl, which usually the Pac-12 team being favored – 
they really don't want to be here. But this is a unique situation because they're actually the dog, the bigger conference. But Fresno State's played here, not going to have the distractions that some teams have coming to Vegas. You know, Fres, every time you come to Vegas, all the distractions you have uh, when you're here. Fresno State's been here, done that, and they played great defense. I like <laughs> Fresno State in this one. Uh, I'll go ahead and lay the points, but I would have loved it much better at the early number of three and a half minus three and a half. But it's six, and I still like it. The Raycom Media Camila Bowl. What the hell, man? <laughs> Eastern Michigan plus three. They opened at a pick. More moves. The over and under is super low. Uh, 45 points. We got a seven and five EM versus a nine and three Georgia Southern. Uh, Drew, uh, you like the favorite, the dog, the over, the under. What do you think? Um, you know, Eastern Michigan played Army earlier in the season, and they don't run the exact same offense as Georgia Southern, but it's still the option principles that you have to try to defend. They really struggled against Army, giving up uh, a lot of rush yards. I see Eastern Michigan struggling again. This is an Eastern Michigan team that is pretty good. But um, they, they had uh, four losses by just a field goal earlier in the season. So uh, they're a lot better than their record indicates, in my opinion. Georgia Southern on the other end, a lot of talent down there in Statesboro, Georgia. These, these running backs really get after it. The quarterback can run the option. Like you said, I think this total's a little low. I think both offenses can have success, Prez. So I'd actually look towards the total here, and I like the over. Uh, there you go. You heard it from Drew. Uh, he's Drew Martin. You can find him at sportsmemo.com every day. Uh, Marco D'Angelo, you can find at Wager Talk, co founder of Wager Talk, and my uh, partner in this uh, game. Uh, you're watching Morning Joe and the Pro, and you can find us at Wager Talk TV on YouTube. Hey, uh, Brez, one, one quick second on that Eastern Michigan game, just to add something that Drew said about the, those losses early in the season for Eastern Michigan. They played a murderous schedule at the beginning of the season. If you go back and look, they played three straight road games uh, from the second week of the season and then four out of five. And that's when they had that four-game losing streak. This is a team that's on a roll at the end of the season, and that's something you want to look for with teams, especially teams that were young that didn't bring back a lot of starters as they get better at the end of the season. I like Eastern Michigan. Hey, Marco, why, why do you think Georgia Southern's getting the money here? That, that's kind of surprising to me because I, I agree with you. Yeah, it, this is the thing that I think people were making more about the option because teams don't see it as often and, you know, preparing for it. But this is the best time to play an option team is whenever you're playing them in a bowl game because, one, you get to extra time to prepare mm -hmm. for them, and the option is all about timing. They lose their timing sitting around for three weeks. So it, to me, I don't understand the move at all, but I'll take the extra points, uh, you know, gladly. That oh, makes a lot of sense. Some great stuff. Uh, the RL Carriers, New Orleans Bowl, Appalachian State, 10-2 and two on the season, 6-4 uh, and four ATS. MTS is 7-3 and three ATS. Money is coming in on Appalachian State. However... The line has dropped from seven to six and a half, and the over and under dropped by two and a half, three points to 47 and a half. Uh, Drew, what do you like in this game? Um, MTSU, you know, a, a lot of people know about Stock still the quarterback and Stock still the coach, father son uh, combo here. I think uh, he's the best player on the field. However, App State. When you run down their schedule of what they were able to do, they won every single game on their schedule by double digits outside of an at Georgia Southern, which we just previously talked about. That's a talented Georgia Southern team on a short week preparing for that triple option. And then uh, week one, which everybody remembers against Penn State, pushing them to the brink. So this is a really good App State team. But like we talked about earlier, they're losing their coach. It's kind of a volatile handicap, in my opinion. I think it's more structured on the MTSU side with a uh, talented senior laid quarterback. But App State's the more talented team. I'm having a tough time as far as uh, sidewise where to go with this. I think you can look both ways. But I do think both, both uh, offenses will have success. So I look towards the over here. A UAB against Northern Illinois. Marco in the cherry bound tart cherry boca miscellaneous. <laughs> Raton, bowl, blah, blah, blah game. 
Uh, plus two and a half for Northern Illinois. They're eight and five on the season, six and four ATS. A UAB, 10 and three on the season. This is a short favorite. Uh, where do you go? And again, yeah, a low total. One, yeah, this is a tough one. You got Northern Illinois, best defensive team in the MAC conference. And I, most of the teams in the MAC conference can't even spell defense. So you got to give them credit there. But they're coming in and playing a UAB team had a thrilling conference championship game to get to this bowl. And if you look, they had played three straight road games. They finished the season next to last game at Texas A&M to have an out-of-conference game at the end of the season to an SEC game. That was tough on them. Then they lost to Middle Tennessee State in the season finale when they had to play them the very next week. So throw out those two losses towards the end of the season. I like UAB here. I'll take them. Uh, to get the job done against Northern Illinois. Drew Martin, San Diego State uh, playing Ohio. 54 is the total, minus three to Ohio. Uh, Ohio is seven and three ATS, and San Diego State is a disastrous three and seven. Uh, where are you going in this game? Yeah, you touched on a three and seven ATS for SDSU. This is one of Rocky Long's worst years that I can remember of him being in San Diego. They lost three straight down the stretch, four of five. That included that loss to UNLV. I don't think I don't think the Mountain West is very talented as a conference. SDSU didn't perform there. Plus Ohio, um, you know, tough kids. They can throw the ball around a little bit. I do like their quarterback. They're a little banged up. I would look towards the Bobcats here though, and it's just a straight fade of San Diego State, Prez. A uh, USF against Marshall in the Bad Boy Mowers Casparilla Bowl. Uh, what the hell is a ba- Bad Boy Mowers? That's like sounds like somebody who did your hair, Marco. Oh boy, You're, yeah. Just because I don't have hair, your hair is like everywhere. Do you own a comb anywhere? Brush what? anything? What the hell? Male owns a comb. <laughs> what are we in? Nineteen sixties. I well, you know, one of us was born in the 60s, okay? I was born in the 60s too, Marco. All right. Well, I'm I'm a little bit older, buddy. I was at the beginning. <laughs> okay, fine. 55 one, 55 like is the bowl. total. I love this bowl game here. I I'm all over Marshall in this one. South Florida, they were a complete collapse down the end of the season. Charlie Strong, I am not a fan of at all in At the end of the season, that last game where he faced Central Florida, his team quit on him, and they quit on him in the fourth quarter when the game was still a two-score game. They had an opportunity, and he punted on fourth and six from around midfield with like 11 minutes left in the game. They just quit after that. I don't have any uh, faith in him. I'll take Marshall. I'll take Doc Holliday. And – Doc Holliday is a guy that does recruit in Florida heavy. This is a big game for him. He beats a Florida team, helps him in his recruiting. He's Marco D'Angelo, wagertalk.com. We got Drew Martin from sportsmemo.com. And I, well, I am the Prez. <laughs> uh, Drew, the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl. Makers Wanted. I was, what, what is that? And it, who is that a company anyway? Uh, the over and under 68 and a half, Toledo minus six. Uh, FIU, the dog, where are you going? Um, like Marco just said, you know, recruiting in Florida, that's Butch Davis. What he's been able to do here in Miami for the FIU program, it's kind of been overshadowed, in my opinion, the last couple of years by Lane Kiffin at FAU. But, um, you know, they have, a, have a, had a hell of a run here, the Golden Panthers. I, I think 9-3 and three ATS, winning a bunch of money for their backers. I'd look to continue to back them here. Toledo, on the other hand, um, yeah, I, and this is a bowl game where you got to really question, you know, the motivation going down here to the Bahamas. It's kind of a, a, a funny-looking game. they got the track around the, uh, the, the, the field there. It's, uh, it, wind sh- might be an issue there on the island, so watch out as we get closer to the date of the game as far as, uh, you know, Toledo will throw it around. FIU will throw it around a little bit. I do um, look to, to, to back the Conference USA team like we talked about earlier. So uh, I'm, I'm going with the FIU Panthers here, Prez. 
Uh, Marco, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. These are really the worst names ever in history of the world. Uh, BYU minus 12 and a half, our largest numbers so far. They're 5-5 five and five ATS. They're playing against Western Michigan, who are 7-3 and three ATS, and the over and under is a hair under 50, uh, which is your hair, under 50 strands. <laughs> Uh, what are you thinking? Well, uh, hey, Marco, it's not like Drew's got a full head of hair either. He's just handsome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Prez. Uh, I can't lay 12 and a half points with the BYU team. And this is a team, you got to wonder, that last game of the season, they played a Utah team, the big rivalry. Utah had nothing to play for in that game because they were playing their Pac-12 championship game the following week. And BYU had a mammoth lead at halftime, and Utah came out in the second half and just absolutely smoked them to get the win. Uh, this is not a bowl that BYU was looking forward to go into and laying this kind of number. I'm going to go with the old adage here, early bowl games, look to the dog, unless you've got a really, really good reason to back the favorite, and I have none. So I'll take Western Michigan plus the generous number. Uh, there you go. Awake Forest, six and six on the year, uh, four and six ATS plus three and a half against Memphis, who are six and four ATS. Uh, over and under the biggest so far in all the bowl games to date to to it, September the twenty second, seventy four and a half. Uh, Drew Martin, what do you like in this Birmingham Bowl? Well, Prez, um, I, I, again, with Birmingham this time of year, we got to watch out for the weather as we get closer. But I, I do see a lot of points. And I trust Memphis's offense more so than I do Wake's. Um, Memphis kind of turned it on here at the end, winning four straight down the stretch, except their last game against UCF. Um, which, obviously, a Which I stronger. bet. You, you had Memphis? No, I UCF? bet UCF. And then I pounded the shit out of them at halftime. Go on. All right, well, uh, UCF is obviously a mo lot more talented than this Wake Forest team. So I think Memphis really turns it on offensively, outscores them. It's a short number here. And with that offensive uh, kind of power, pow uh, firepower that the Memphis Tigers have, good quarterback there throwing it around, I like Memphis to cover this short number, Prez. Marco in the lockhead, Martin. I don't know what the hell that is either. Armed Forces Bowl. Uh, nothing nothing like getting a sponsor for an armed forces bowl. Next, we're going to see the U.S. Army like head into wherever, you know, Kuwait or whatever, and they'll be like sponsored by AIG Insurance. Anyway, uh, Army minus three and a half against Houston. Man, Army, uh, I can't bet Army in this spot. I, 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 I like Houston. Eight and four on the season, but uh, I'm taking Houston here. That's my only pick for this show. Your only pick for the show. I'll tell you what, uh, Prez, don't sleep on this Army team. This offense is tough to prepare for, and they just keep coming at you and coming at you. Now, the thing that you have working for you is if Houston is able to get some separation and gets that 14-point right. lead, then you've got problems with the running game for Army. But I'll tell you what, they, Army has played well all season long. And let's not forget, they went into Oklahoma earlier in the season uh, as a huge underdog, 28 and a half points, and they were able to stay with Oklahoma. And you would think that the Oklahoma offense, much better than the Houston offense, and they couldn't get the separation away from this team because it frustrates the other offense because they got to sit on the sidelines for so long and watch these six and seven minute drives, and it, you know it just puts you into a you know a snooze. I got to go with Army plus the points here. They're just uh, I, I'm again you know these early bowls and looking at these teams and not being familiar with the option. Now I will give Houston uh, now that they face Navy in that conference every year they have done better against it, uh, but Navy put up 36 points against them and Navy's option was nowhere near as good as armies this year drew even the american dollar has a bowl game the dollar general bowl buffalo minus two uh against troy both of these teams have had a really good season uh troy seven and two ats 
Uh, Buffalo seven and three against the spread over and under 51 and a half. What do we do? Um, both, both teams have had great season press. Both teams are very well coached. Neil Brown and Lance Leopold. Lance Leopold, what he's been able to do here with the Buffalo Bulls, I think has been amazing. He stepped up from Division Three with Wisconsin Whitewater, winning uh, national championships there. He's built this program up, recruiting in the South, bringing all the kids up. Uh, Tyree Jackson, the quarterback for Buffalo, he's going to get a look at the next level. But this team isn't just all about him. they got a next-level wide receiver as well, talent all over the field. Um, Troy, their, la- their last two out of three games, they-, they-, they struggled against App State a little bit. They did cover also against uh, Texas State. They just won 12-7. That Texas State team, one of the worst teams in, in uh, Division One. I would actually look for uh, Buffalo in their last three games. I, I almost forgot this. Northern Illinois in Ohio, two of their last three games, they-, they lost on national TV. I think a lot of eyeballs saw that. A lot of money lost on Buffalo. I actually think that's why we're getting a push towards Troy money. So I, I'm going to take that extra point or two that the market's giving us. I like Buffalo here, Prez. Marco, the SoFi Hawaii Bowl, uh, La Tech, plus one against Hawaii, uh, over and under, has gone up three points to 60. What do you like? Yeah, I'm wrong team's favorite here, and by game time, it's going to correct itself. Louisiana Tech's going to be the favorite. I never could understand Hawaii having this bowl game every year. You play all year, you get bowl eligible, and for your reward, what do you get to do? You get to stay at home and play in your home stadium. Oh, what a tough reward, staying in Hawaii. Oh, my heart breaks. Well, you know what? They're there. You want to know a reward? Play in Ohio. (laughs) <laughs> but Prez, the point of it is, is you know, you want to go somewhere different it, it, for the kids. I They're get there. it, dude. They're, I get it. I, I, this offense for Louisiana Tech, the passing game is going to be too much for Hawaii. You look the last three games, what Louisiana Tech did down the stretch: uh, three fourteen passing, two forty three, three nineteen. Uh, just too much for this Hawaii defense. The only thing you got to be concerned with, and this is why Hawaii surprises teams during the regular season, is when it's just a regular season game, it's easily to get distracted by the island. But this is a bowl game. Yeah, Louisiana Tech's going to spend some time on the beach and everything, but it is a bowl game. They are there for something. I'm going to go ahead and go with Louisiana Tech, and I would suggest betting them now because you're going to be laying points on game day. He's Marco. We got Drew with us. I'm the Prez. Uh, gentlemen, we're going to change this around really quick because we're running out of time. Uh, both of you, are you each free on Wednesday of next week to go from the 27th till the end? Uh, Prez, unfortunately, I am not. We've got a full day of videos and we're doing the podcast Wednesday instead of Thursday next week. So how about Thursday? Should we finish it up on Thursday? I can make Thursday happen, yes, sir. Drew? Let's do it. Let's do it, Prez. Okay, well, then we've got to talk about the Wednesday games. Uh, Wednesday, December 26th, the Serve Pro. (laughs) The Serve Pro First Responder Bowl. Boise State minus two and a half. uh, Over and under 56. Uh, Drew, your game. Uh, BC fell apart down the stretch. Uh, Steve Adazio kind of, not that he lost the team. They just, uh, you know, obviously losing three straight, three straight ATS going up against Boise state. Boise state has the more talented quarterback in Brett Rippon, more talent across the field. I'm actually really surprised by this number two and a half starting to show up. You can get the Broncos at that price. I like, I know it's not on the blue turf here, but, uh, Boise state, one of my favorite plays of bowl season for us. I like, I like Boise state in this one. Excellent. Thank you, my brother. The quick lane bowl, uh, that's usually the lane that I'm in in my BMW 4 Series convertible. Uh, Minnesota plus six against Georgia Tech. The line has moved, Marco, from minus three and a half to minus six. A lot of money's coming in on GT. Uh, both teams are five and five ATS on the season. Uh, both teams kind of suck. Uh, what do you think? Well, the, the line movement's coming in here uh, for a couple reasons. One, Paul Johnson 
This is going to be his final game. He's retiring, so you know the Georgia Tech team is going to be up for him, win one for the Gipper syndrome there. And then you've got the suspensions coming down uh, with the Minnesota players. So the combination of that brings the money to Georgia Tech, and really that's where the money should be. This Minnesota team wasn't good at all. They got a win at the end of the season over a very overrated Wisconsin team. They were plus four in the turnovers in that game to get their sixth win just to become bowl eligible. I lean to Georgia Tech, but the line is going up. You've lost value. Still a small lean to Georgia Tech. Cheese at bowl, Drew. California against TCU. It's a pick em. Uh, look, I think California did what they expected themselves to do this season, but TCU, what a letdown year for them. Uh, what a bad bowl for them. I got to feel like California is going to be way more up to play this ridiculously named bowl than TCU. I agree with you. Uh, side perspective, I'd look Cal here. You can still get them at pick them. I, I, I can only see money coming in on Cal um, Prez, you know, TCU, you touched on it, just a terrible year for him. Starts at the quarterback position. The the starter was banged up. The backup came in. He, he was no good. They couldn't find anything, any rhythm. Gary Patterson, really tough year. Good defense, however. Um, I, I would look to go under, if you got the balls to do it, to go under a 40 in a college football game. But uh, even more so, I like the side here. I agree with you. The Cal Bears is the side I'm looking for, Prez. Under 40 was my number when I was in grade 12 for amount of women I slept with. I, it was my, under 40 minus 123, if I recall. Took it over the total in the first eight months. Marco, <laughs> our last game, and I, and then we're, because I, we're going to do the show on Thursday next week, so we will be able to catch the Miami-Wisconsin New Era Pinstripe Bowl. Uh, but we won't be able to get the Duke game up. So let's do the Duke game now and then call it a show. Duke plus four and a half uh, against Temple. Uh, this Duke team, I mean, look, they play good teams tough and bad teams uh, bad. So what do you like in this game? Yeah, well, they finished the season on, you know, a bad note, losing four of their last six games. Uh, I was all set on this game, you know, when the Bulls first came out looking at Temple. But, Prez, with the coaching situation there, the disruption, uh, I got to lean to Wake – or, excuse me, to Duke uh, with the more stable situation. And let's do what you say. They are a team that plays to the level of the competition. Let's look for them in the bowl to deliver. I'll take them plus the small number here. Take Duke plus the field goal and a half. He's Marco from Wager Talk, Drew from Sports Memo. I'm the Prez. Uh, we're halfway done our bowl season. There are way too many bowl games. It's bordering on ridiculous, but it's great for business. So, hey, let's have some more. I can even name them if you want. The Blue Stripe Cat Bowl. The uh, Bobby Orr Flying Through the Air Bowl. That's because I just looked at my Bobby Orr picture. The... Paul Coffee Bowl. Coffee. Anyway, Marco, give your promo out one more time and let's get the hell out of here. I'll see both of you next Thursday at noon Eastern to finish up. All right. Uh, check out that Insider Game of the Week tonight in the NBA. It's promo code MD10. Just enter that at checkout and you will get that $25 play for just $10 tonight. Okay, Drew. Prince, do I get an outro? Do, what, Drew, you know what? Take us home. Hey, and, and Prez, in honor of you and uh, the, the sexual ass escapades in this show, we're doing a sports memo coupon code CFB69. That's CFB69, easy number to remember, guys, for uh, the rest of the college football bowl season for just 69 bucks at uh, sportsmemo.com. Any handicapper you want, myself, Teddy Covers, uh, Rob Vino, Brent Crow, any of the guys there, check them out. CFB69 at checkout. Okay, thanks, brother. Guys, be well. We'll see you both next Thursday to finish this up. Thanks, Prez. Later, Marco. Later, Drew.